Hallelujah. 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 This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We welcome you on today to St. Stephen Church of God in Christ, located at 189, D-189, South Burnett Road, in the Sea-Tac section of Virginia Beach, where our pastor, the administrator assistant, Bruce E. Hughes Sr., and our first lady, missionary Vicki Hughes, Amen. We want to thank each and every one of you joining us here today. And for those who are on live stream media, we ask that you get into the service, that we will allow God just to be God. We will allow God to just be God. And as we have our opening selection by the gospel choir, amen and amen. his name. Father God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, here we are once again in your presence, oh God. Come today, oh Father God, to give you all the glory. We come today, oh God, to lift up our voice to you, oh God. Come to you, oh God, to clap our hands, oh God. We come today, oh Father God, to let you know, oh God, that we love you. Before we ask anything on the day, oh God, 
First of all, that we ask that you forgive us of our sins. Forgive us of our iniquities, oh God. Forgive us of all our transgressions, oh God. Forgive us of all our unrighteous thoughts, oh God. Forgive us for stepping outside of your will, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Thank you for another touch today. Allowing us to wake up this morning, oh God. To get out of that bed, oh God. To get on our knees, oh God. To tell you thank you, oh God. To clothe us, oh God. To wash our face, oh God. To brush our teeth, oh God. The simple things, oh God. You allowed us, oh God, to get in our automobiles. Bring us safely over the highways. Into the parking lot. Into the threshold of your kingdom. To give you honor, oh God. To give you glory, oh God. To say thank you. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. If I have 10,000 tongues, oh God, I couldn't say thank you enough, oh God, for my life, for your strength, for being my redeemer, oh God, for being my strength, for being my help, for being my deliverer, for being my healer. I just want to tell you thank you. Father God, we just want to tell you thank you for allowing that warm blood to still be running in our veins, to allow us to still be amongst the living, to allow us, oh God, to be in your presence, oh God, to still be within your will, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Oh, Father God, we ask now, oh God, where we see the wicked, oh Father God, where we see the dangers, Oh, Father God, where we see the unrighteousness. But, oh, Father God, to help us to be that light that shines in the darkness, oh God. Help us to be that one, oh God. That willing, oh God, to, to be in your holiness. Let us rest rooted and abide in your word, oh God, on this day. Look upon your speaker on the day, your manservant, oh God. The elder Donnie Gregory, oh God. Pray forth a word on today that it will shake the very foundation to our core, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God. Strengthen your people, oh God. And look upon your manservant on today, oh Father God, the pastor of the Hughes Senior, oh God. As he lead us, oh Father God, in true right righteousness and worship, oh God. We ask, oh Father God, that you be invited guests in this temple, oh God that meet the needs of your people, whatever it may be, O oh God. This is our prayer we lay before you, O oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. To read today can be found in the book of Psalms 51, and we read the verses 
1 through 6 and concludes at verses 10 and 11. And the readers thus, have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to thy multitude of thy tender mercy, blot out my transgression, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I acknowledge my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against thee and thee only have I sinned, and done this evil in thy sight. Thou, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. Behold, I was shaped in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. Behold, thou desire truth in the inward parts, and in the hidden part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Concluding at 11 and 12, I mean 10 and 11. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Amen and amen. amen. The word of God for the people of God. You may be seated at this time. We're calling forth another selection by our gospel choir, and I will be back to affirm our faith in the Lord. Amen. 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 On the back of your, uh, on the back of the pews, you'll see your hymn book. Everybody, please stand and turn to hymn no 280. This is for all of us to sing. Hymn no 280. Take your burdens to the Lord and what?
of faith can be found in our Yes Lord hymn book page 607 and also it can be on our monitors I will be your leader and you will be the congregation Amen we ask that you please bring all wondering minds in Amen we want to all be on the same accord so when the Lord comes in, amen. amen, so I will be the leader. We believe the Bible to be the inspired and only infallible word of God. We believe in the blessed hope, which is the rapture of the church of God, which is in Christ at his return. We believe that the only means of being finished from sin is true repentance, faith in the precious blood of Jesus Christ, and being baptized in water. We believe that regeneration by the Holy Ghost is absolutely essential for personal salvation. We believe that the redemptive work of Christ on the cross provides healing for the human body. We believe that the baptism in the Holy Ghost, according to Acts 2 and 4, is given to the believers who ask for it. All together, we believe in the sanctifying power of the Holy Spirit, by whose indwelling the Christian is able to live a holy and separated life in this present world. Amen. At this time, we're calling for our praise and worship team. We're calling for our praise and worship team. Amen to take us into the next phase of this service. Amen. We ask that you please get with them as the Spirit give utterance. Amen. How many of you want the Lord to be pleased with your life? How many of you want the Lord to get the glory out of your life? Hallelujah. It's not about me, but it's all about Him and Him getting the glory. Say thank you. Thank you. you get the glory. You get the 
glory. You get the praise. You get the praise. You take the honor. You take the honor. I wanna say thank you. Thank you. you get the glory. You get the glory. You get all the praise. You get the praise. You didn't have to love me. You 
so good to us. God, you've been so good to us. God, you've been so good to us. God, you've been so good. God, you've been so good. You've been so kind. You've been so wonderful. You've been so merciful. You keep doing it over and 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 over. Need you to need you to get it down into your soul. That God keep blessing you over and over and over and over and over. There's no end to it. And over and over and over and over. There's no end to his greatness. need you to get it in your soul 
as the Children's Church is coming at this time under the leadership of missionary evangelist Ronda Gregory. But I just want you to get it in your mind. I just want you to get it in your spirit. I just want you to get it in your atmosphere. I just want you to get it. I just want you to catch it. I just want somebody to catch hold as the Lord is passing by. Catch hold to your blessing. Catch hold to your miracle. Catch hold. Sometimes you just have to give way to the spirit and you let God have his way. At this time, our children's church is coming. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. All right, we have our children here this morning. But before we begin, I just want to make a quick announcement. Uh, we have our fall festival coming up. Give it up. On October the 31st, it'll be taking place at the SeaTac, uh, well, Mount Olive Church. Thank you for the flyer. We're encouraging everybody to come out, enjoy yourselves, bring your family, your friends, and let's have a good time as a community together. All right. First, we we're going to have prayer by Elena. Please stand and bow your head. Thank you, God, for everything you've done. Bless the people who are sick and in the hospital. Bless people. Bless everybody and help people. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Thank you. And now we'll have our scripture reading. Genesis 111. God said, Let the earth bring forth grass, the herb yielding seed in the fruit, tree yielding fruit after his kind, whose seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. Amen. Thank you. And now we will have the um, lesson by Sister Rose Ellis. Good morning, church. Um, our lessons come from Genesis 1 and 1. I don't know if you hear her clearly. It says, God said, let the earth bring forth grass, the herbs yielding seed, and the fruit tree yielding fruit after his kind, whom seed is in itself upon the earth, and it was so. So we do know when God said, it is so. So let's obey and receive the word of the Lord. So our lesson this morning, we're going to talk about three apples. And there's 25 or more. 
I saw one yesterday was real huge. I never saw one that huge before. But anyway, it says, um, and we're talking about our lessons about this morning. It's about the family of God. Okay, so we're going to use these three apples. First, we talk about um, the three apples. Uh, do, um, the first three apples is the, what says the red delicious apple? What was the other one? The golden apple, delicious apple? And the Fuji apple. All right. And they are sweet. And some of them are a little tart, but you know, those red delicious apples, they can be real good. And I thank God they already have, and isn't God wonderful? They already have sugar in it. So you don't have to put no sugar. <laughs> I tell you, God is awesome in, in his creation. So do you think these three apples all came from the same tree? Really? You sure all three of them apples didn't come from the same tree? No, because I just told you. I say the sea is in itself. So they were different trees. And, but they all had the same leaf. And the leaf they had is like this. All of them have the same type of leaf. It's made like this. All of three of them. So, also it says here, um, in some with the red delicious tree and did it say some with the golden tree and the Fuji tree? In nature, you will not find one tree that has all the three different kinds of apples, okay? The Bible teaches us in Genesis 1 and 11, which we just read, that every seed will bring forth a fruit of its own kind. Now, let's think about people, okay? <laughs> Have you ever had someone to say to you, you look like somebody, you like your mom? your dad, your sister, a brother. What did you say? Who did they say you look like? My mom. Who did they say you look like? My mom. Who did they say you look like? My dad. All right, who did they say you look like? My grandma. Your grandma. Who did they say you look like? My aunt. Okay, who did they say you look like? My dad. Who did they say you look like? My mom. Who did they say you look like? My auntie. Who did they say you look like? My dad. All right, who did they say you look like? My dad. Your dad. What did they say you look like? Told me I look like my dad. All right, now when you come, um, okay. So we talk about people now. So uh, I heard that. <laughs> ah, I heard that, but I was clear. All right, just like, just like with apple, people from the same family tree have the same look, the same skin color, eyes, hair, height, shape of nose, body shape, and many. Other this happened because all these physical characteristics are passed down from one generation to the other. There, there is a wonderful thing called adoption. What do we say adoption means? Adoption means when you get adopted from a different parent that's not your parent. Why does that mean? <laughs> and it means that that they're like your adopted mom and or they you could be from a different country and they're not your real parents. All right. All right. Thank God I'm teaching. They're learning. That's what I want them to do. Learn as I teach. I don't want to be in vain. All right. So I let them know about adoption. But without being adopted, there is another kind of family that we that we all look like which family is that? God's family. God's family. God's family. All right. Now, we know God made man in his own what? Image. So it don't mean physical. We come a spiritual characteristic, all right? So without being adopted, there is a, okay, I just read that. Okay, and so God's family, no matter what your last name is, what you look like, or what country you live in or come from, you can be part of who family? God family. So now how do we become part of God's family? What you got to do? Praise and worship him. Okay, praise and worship him. What else does it say? Anyone else? Yeah, anyone else? Say it. Repent. Repent and be ye saved. And what we say, and you got a keeper. What is keeper? What is that keeper? 
Say it again, baby. Woo! Thank you, Jesus. What is it again, baby? Say it again. Everybody say it. The Holy Ghost is our keeper. So we're going to do, so I have a tree here. This is the fruit tree. And so we talk about the different leaves that I had on it. And I put the apples and the different kinds of apples. Now we're going to turn it over. We're going to go to God's family. Turn it over. Upside down. All right, here's another tree. This is God's family tree. And what I did, I had all the children put their name on it because everybody want to go to heaven, right? Yeah, everybody want to go to heaven. But what you got to do first? You got to repent and be ye saved and be what? Filled with the what? Holy Ghost. And so we have some characteristics of the Holy Ghost, and we're going to let uh, Alicia going to name those different characteristics. Yeah, I'm just going to do different characters. I'm going to go through them really fast because the time is well spent. So we have... <clears throat> Joy, love, peace, temperance, meekness, meekness. goodness, goodness, gentleness. She said long suffering. All right, those are just some of the characteristics of those who are going to wrap it on up. All right, <laughs> so we thank God for this lesson. So it's the main part of this lesson is that they would know that there's God's family tree and we all can be part of it. You just need to be saved, baptized, and filled with his precious Holy Ghost. And, he's, and the what's our keeper? The Holy Ghost. What is our keeper? The Holy Ghost. And don't you forget it, the Holy Ghost. You got to be saved, but you need the Holy Ghost to be your keeper. If you want to be kept, you pray for us. Amen, amen. Give a round of applause for our children, our future. Amen and amen. It is now time that we will honor the Lord on today. Through your liberal giving, on behalf of our pastor, we want to say thank you. For those who have already given, through our Givelify application, we have our credit card machine by missionary Pamela Mitchell. We have our tithes and offering vessel, Deacon Courtney Olds. We have our benevolent our mission vessel by Deacon Barron, Freddie Barron. Amen. We have several ways to give. As we have our credit card machine, we have our Givelify application would be shown on the screen. We have check written for today. Today's date, October 13th, amen, 2024, just in case, amen. We're still taking coins, cash, amen. And we thank again for our pastor who is leading us in our giving, who gave through Givelify uh, earlier this week. We have Mr. Walter Burden is sharing in this offering on today and brother Ronnie Ford. Amen. So we ask that you please stand. And we ask that everyone come and touch the vessel. Even if you don't have any monetary commitment today, but you have something that you have before God. Touch and agree by coming and walking by faith. Amen. We extend that offering unto heaven. Gracious Father God, we thank you for what you have already done in our eyes, O oh God. And O oh Father God, what you are doing through the Spirit on today. Bless the offering on today, O oh God. Bless those desire to give. Bless those, O oh God, who's going to walk by faith and touch your vessel, O oh God. That, O oh Father God, that you will bless them, O oh God, in their desires, O oh God. As you said, ask and we shall receive, O God. Seek it and we shall find, and knock and it shall be open unto us, O God. So we thank you now for what you have already done. And this is our prayer. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. Jesus said, if you lean. Say you can lean on me. Jesus 
coming to introduce our speaker and after introduction we will have another selection by the gospel choir and then we ask that you rise to your feet as the man of God approach the podium amen I'm here to give you the bow of our very own elder Donnie Gregory born 1956 to Robert and Margaret Gregory he's a tenth of eleven children He's a member of the St. Stephen's Church. He has been married to the love of his life, Sister Faye, for over 47 years. He's a retired civil servant after 38 years of work. He's a local church worker. He worked in the local church, the district, the state, the national. He's also the national adjutant and the servant leader of the Region 8 Church of God in Christ. YWP, YWP, YPWW president, Men's Sunday school teacher. On April 7, 2024, he was elected to the as president of the Historic C-Tech Civic League, the oldest African American community in America. <laughs> Elder Donna Gregg is a member of the Greg and Gregory Brothers Singing Group. Been singing over 50 years. He's a friend. He's a brother. He's an encourager. He's a true man of God a man after God's own heart. The next voice you will hear after the choir comes and gives us that from our selection is the elder Donnie Gregory. Hear ye as he comes. <laughs> Boy, uh. Come on, put those hands together. Oh yeah. If you love the Lord, put your hands together and help us sing this song. God is my everything. God is my everything. He's my joy. He's my hope. My hope. You know, He's my rock in a weary land. 
over the hills and the mountain and through the river and through the flood. And you even brought us through the dark places. You brought us through the place where we were stuck in life. But you navigated us through. You was with us when we was put out of the car on a dark road. 
you helped us to navigate our way back through. Can't nobody do you like Jesus. And Lord, we thank you this morning. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big hand praise. You may take your seat. I want you to sing this little hymn that I used to hear Mother Aubrey say. He's a wonder in my soul. He's a wonder in my soul. He's a wonder in my soul. Bless his name. He's a wonder in my soul. He's a wonder in my soul. Jesus is a wonder in my soul. Bless his name. Come on, say it again, baby. He's a wonder. In my soul, he's a wonder. In my soul, Jesus is a wonder. In my soul, bless my soul, love Jesus. My soul, Woo. love my soul, love Jesus, bless his name, my soul, love Jesus, my Love Jesus, my soul. Love, bless His name. Yes, yes, yes. Oh Lord. Yes, Jesus, call him by his name. Jesus, call him by his name. Jesus, oh, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Tell the Lord, yes. He has brought us thus far. And we are glad. Hallelujah. It was something about those days that it, it grounded me in the truth of the spiritual ramifications of God. You couldn't get this in a textbook. You had to have been here. You had to have been here to watch the old saints labor in the law. Ali O. Thelma Benjamin. Sarah Cartwright. Andy Cartwright. Mother Lothar. Liza Shaw. You had to have been here and listen that the sounds reaching the heavens. And you can't shake that in the kind of way. I can't, I can't get away from that so fast. It's down in my soul. I, 
I, I, was, I was born in this church. My mother would bring me and Dalton. Well, me and Dalton, we've been cool in the gang ever since we was born. And most of the things I experienced, he experienced, because we one year apart. You know, my other two sisters a little bit older, but listen. During the earlier days, when we were members at this church, my mother, I imagine she participated on the different auxiliaries and whatnot. She had 11 children. So my, I, I, as I didn't know this then, but I know now that my mother wanted us to go to church. And what she would do, Mother Durham, she would let me and Dalton come to Sunday school. But we couldn't stay for the big church. We had to go back home after Sunday school because that the big church was my mama's part. And when we went back home, she would, she would get dressed and she would come to the big church. We couldn't, we, we didn't stay around the big church too much. We got most of our teaching from out of the Sunday school. Mother Cyril Nixon, Liza Godfrey, Joe Dukes. They were the Sunday school masters in this church. And they put something down in me at a young age. And it was not so easy to shake. That even now, after the years of, of accountability, see, there are there's, there's some years uh, where there is some time come when you become accountable for your own soul. But leading up through the years of accountability, my mama was responsible for me. And we came to church. I learned Sunday school. I learned from the card class, Cyril Nixon. I love Cyril Nixon. Our birthday was the same day. And on, my, on our birthday, she would bring cupcakes, and we would eat cupcakes. But my point is, throughout all of my experience, I accepted the Lord in 1977. For myself, mama stuff, you know, that, that get old. I had to receive them for myself. But my point is, I learned God for myself. And all of these 47 years that I've been saved, I met him in every instance of life. I seen him show up when I was sad. I've seen, his, I've seen his presence, my first lady, when my heart was broke. I see how he show up with a broken heart. I seen him show up when I was bereaved and I was grieved in my spirit. He taught me how to recognize him when my heart is grieving. And I've also seen him when I'm at the epitome of joy and happiness, he showed me that all of my joys and happiness are not beyond him because he is the one that has provided in the first place. I love the Lord for he has heard my cry and he has pitied by every groan. And long as I live, look at somebody that said, long as I live, when trouble rise, I'll hasten to his call. You gotta, we're living in a time now, you gotta, you, you gotta learn how to hold on and get God for yourself. Wait with the jive, man. You gonna be tested, and your very foundation is gonna be tested. 
And if you are not made out of the stuff that God said, you're going to fail, man. You're going to quit. I had a I had a pastor. I guess you know everybody every every we don't have a divided church. There, but there are three dispensations in this church. You got some people that came directly up through Spence. They're holding on to some traditions that he put in them. Well, as well, I was just a boy when Spence was here. I don't know his doctrine and his teaching in the sense like I knew Ella Burden's doctrine. And whatever I am today, Ella Burden put it in me. And I still stand on the traditions of that doctrine, which was all godly and principled. Come on, let's give the Lord a great big hand, praise. I'm standing. I ain't going to quit. The devil want you to quit. The devil want you to backslide. The devil want you to throw in the towel. The devil want you to get mad. The devil want you to fight back. But for God I live, and for God I die. For God I live, and for God I die. I'm not going to be long. I know we got a 5 o'clock service, and I'm not going to try to do I got something to tell you, though. I got something to say this morning. For God I live. And sometimes I used to think Ella Burton was a little tough. He would make us stand up and confess to the church that you love the Lord. He would rebuke that shame. He said, ain't no shame in God. Uh, you remember, you remember. He, he rebuked pride. You come in here too clean, he'll make you take your hat off. <laughs> we, 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 we had one preacher, he had a brand new suit and a brand new white hat. He said, take that hat off and throw it on the floor. <laughs> he, was, <laughs> he was testing to see how saved he was. <laughs> the brother threw the hat right on the floor. But these are the things that they put in us. And it's not, it's not old fogey or old timey. You're going to need this one day. You put it in us to make us humble. Like puffed up. More than you are. Am I talking to a church with a mouth? Puffed up. More than what you are. Be humble, be of a low degree. Huh? And the Lord will exalt you. Let the Lord lift you up. I'm preaching now. Let the Lord exalt you. And he will exalt you in due time. Your time is not his time. And if you get on his clock, it may be 20 years from now before he do what he said he was going to do 20 years prior. Let's walk patiently in here. Woo! I, I'm, I'm just going to, a little bit right here, I want to say this because Pastor Hughes asked me to speak today. Uh, this is the Sunday that my good friend L.O. was supposed to be preaching. And I felt some kind of way in the beginning because he had always looked at me as some type of a mentor to him in his life. 
We used to have Brother's Day on Sundays. All of the aspirants, men, guys who used to think they could preach or knew the Bible. Ella Burton had a thing around here called Brother's Day. Every second Sunday, we had our day, and they would make them all come up, and they would line up on both sides of the podium with their little scriptures in their hand. Didn't know what in the world they were talking about, but they would get up there, and they would do their testimony. And Ella Holmes, he always told me that I was his inspiration or his, his get-by. Because I guess I would say something to get him doing or something, shouting or something. And he said all he had to do was walk up there behind me and ride the gravy. <laughs> so he beat me in. But well, hello, you hold my place because I'm coming, man. I'm coming with breakneck speed because I'm holding on to the same God that you held on to all of these years. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Woo! I got something that I want to share with you. And when I share this, this is going to be a little unorthodox this morning because this is the way the Lord told me to give it to you. Because you're going to be tested in your conviction. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. And you're not above you you you're not above reproach. You're gonna be tested, and your conviction is gonna be drawn out. He might let it happen before millions, and he just might let it happen between you and him. But you're going to be tested in your conviction and in your walk. Don't, don't be just looking at people and talking about, oh, he got it made or she got it made. You don't know what they're going through. You don't know what they've been through. Watch how you poke fun at people. The way they look. The way they dress. The way they smell. You don't know what God is doing. I, 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 I want to get to something. And, and my subject is pray. My subject is pray. I came out here last Tuesday for prayer. And we had to do the prayer on the steps of the church. Don't you think God didn't meet us out there? I, I, was, I was proud of them little mothers. They was a little chilly, but they was praying. They had their chair out there on the front, and they was rebuking the devil. But it was right for me because I needed that. Isn't God amazing? I was looking to come inside and get on the warm benches and all. But God said, no, we out here on the porch. They had the shells out, Jack, like we was at the altar. Each one sit down and all pray over them. Some was in the car, we went to the car and prayed for them. Didn't we? Y'all, that was here. The scripture says, Lord, teach us to pray. That mean, you know what that mean, don't you? It's not the how. The Holy Ghost will teach you how. They talk, the, the Holy Ghost will show you how to tune it up. Groanings that cannot be uttered. That's the Holy Ghost. But you need to learn to pray. It's always right to pray. Your sickness is no precursor for you not to pray. The Bible says pray always, lifting up holy hands in the sanctuary. Didn't it? And prayer is one of those 
utensils or tools that God has placed in our uh, war chest. If you don't know how to pray, you better ask God to give it to you to pray. And the fervent, effectual prayer of who? How many righteous folk in here? And I'm not talking about that kind of self-righteousness. I'm talking about the righteousness that God has qualified you to be. The fervent prayer of the righteous, it does what? Availeth a whole lot. It availeth much. It ain't nothing that I can't ask God for. It ain't nothing that God won't do for me. And he'll do it for you. Huh? You know, I mean, you know, college ain't for everybody. There ain't nothing wrong with college. But college ain't for everybody. Some of y'all going to have to go get a vocation and be successful in life. Am I talking to a church with a mouth? I ain't got no college degree. I barely made it out of high school. Got a diploma. But guess where that little diploma took me? It took me in the government to where I oversaw a $5 million budget in the meat department. You hear what I say? I ain't had no degree. That was my vocation. So my point is, God is in control of your life. He's bigger than what you see or think. He's bigger than that disease you're carrying. He's bigger than what's going on in your house. Hey! Uh, Lord Jesus. <laughs> He's bigger than that. Oh, I love y'all so much. I guarantee y'all won't be past one o'clock. But I already talked to the pastor about where I'm going with this today. God got me on a, he got me on a mission. Huh? I'm not mad with nobody. I'm not jealous of nobody. I don't envy nobody. I ain't got no beef with nobody. Courtney, it was the Lord that brought me thus far. And he's the one that I depend on. But you got to know the schematics of God. Sometimes he don't, sometimes he don't walk down the straight road. Sometimes he'll cut to the left. But the thing is, you got to know how to cut with him. You can't keep walking straight and he don't told you to cut right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you still walking straight, you're going to run into something. You got to be sensitive enough to know when God is cutting the corner. That's what a lot of folk get hung up at. Huh? Got to recognize the spirit. And you know what? I appreciate what you did. This is a board member of the SeaTac Civic League. And you know what? It's a joy to see her on that board. But you know what she'll do? She'll get up and tell the folk about the love of God. What did you tell them the other day? Not expedient. That's right. He, she said we're living in a time where folk rather believe a lie than the truth. She said that in a civic meeting. Everybody ain't saved in the civic league. They'll believe a lie. Then the truth. I said, oh, praise God. You know, you know I'm, trying to be the, I'm trying to be the president. That's a new gig for me. But I said, thank you, Jesus. But Apostle Wright, I love the Lord. Let's give him another great big hand praise, everybody. 
Y'all still filming me? Now look. I, I, I want to I wanna tell you something. I'm just not out here monkey shining. You know? I sing with my brothers. That's about all the joy I get out of life except for playing chess other than my love for God. I love singing with my brothers. We've been together 50 years. We sung with other two other guys, but they one died and the other one moved away, and we said we're going to stay with three to keep the money in house. <laughs> we'll get a little more. I love the Lord. You know, I don't want the young folk to get it twisted. This ain't no party time. And I don't know the Lord might call me next week. I don't know. But I got to tell the young folk. This ain't no party club. Gird up your lawns. Eat the whole book. Selling it in your loins and in your being. Stand for the truth. Ella Burton used to say, get it in your loins and bound it about your neck. Then you won't be ashamed when you come to that place. I've been on this track a long time. I ain't worried about recognition. I done been there. In 1984, mother, I became a national adjutant of the Church of God in Christ. I served under Bishop J.O. Patterson, Bishop Lewis Henry Ford, and Bishop Channel Owen. Three different administrations. I was a national adjutant. Serve with dignity and pride. Yeah. Didn't mind to bring the prophet a glass of water because the Bible said you bring him a glass, God is going to bless you. I knew that secret. I knew how to bless the leader. It was a reason why Bishop Thomas lived next door to me down here. That's my family property. He wanted to live beside me. You must not be too bad of a fella if the bishop want to live beside you. Am I talking to a church with a mouth? Yeah. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I was a national adjutant. Didn't have far to go. The limo right there, I could jump in it. Didn't have to stay in no hotel, come home and go to sleep. Blessings. Ain't a shame of my record. Three, 20 years. I'm talking to a church with a mouth. I'm showing you my navigation through this thing. It ain't been easy, Mother Dom. Been some times of heartbreak, but I prayed. It taught me how to pray. It taught me how to get on my knees and pray. That one job, 20 years, yes, sir. and I mastered it. I was the GOAT. Yes, sir. The, 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 the presidium of our church of God in Christ right now, I served with every one of them brothers at that level during that time. They were all just like I was, state and national adjutants. And I served this administration. I served Bishop J. U. Shears as one of his regional guys. Over seven states, ain't talking about jurisdiction, seven states, Virginia, West Virginia, Maryland, D.C., Philadelphia, Delaware, and New Jersey. A regional man. I'm just talking to my church with a mouth right now. Let me talk to you because I'm going somewhere with this. Sometimes you got to let folk know that you know who you are. But Paul said, I know who I am, but I'm not going to boast about it. 
He says, all done to me that I may gain Christ. I lay low, man. I ain't trying to bump my head up against folk, trying to make folk do things for me. God got my record. Let me tell you, Bishop Cheer, I work for him. They know me too. Ella Wells was a scribe at that time. Bishop Thuston, who was the General Assembly uh, president, he was the dean. But Thurgood was one of the workers. Just naming a few names. They all are bishops. That's all right. Because I'm going somewhere with this. And I want the young fellows to come close when I tell them. And sometimes people look at you when things don't go the way they think they ought to go. They look at you and they judge your life. Make you think you've done something wrong. As long as God got your record, what you worried about folk for? Huh? God is the one that validates you. God is the validator. You walking upright and you living right to the best of your ability? God got your record. You got a clean hands and a clean heart? Many a nights of tears. Many a nights of wondering. You said you would be here, but I don't see you. Because I'm not ready to show myself yet. You just keep your hand in my hand. And I kept walking. Yes, Lord. I just kept walking down behind the Lord. Am I talking to a church with a mouth? Am I helping anybody? Because I'm going somewhere with this. Now look, Mother Durham, hey, Ella Hughes, can he do it now? <laughs>